Bollocks. The futures of two drivers were sealed today, and one of theirs was Liam Lawson. I would consider him the biggest winner of the Singaporean Grand Prix, even more of a winner than Carlos Sainz, but I'll talk more about Carlos later. Liam Lawson, right here, got Alpha Tauri's best result of the entire season, almost diminishing what Yuki Tsunoda has been able to do, carrying the team for the longest time. In one short race and three Grand Prix, Liam Lawson, I think, has practically made himself a shoe in for 2024. I have a very big sneaking suspicion that Yuki Tsunoda will be benched at the Qatarian Grand Prix when Daniel Ricciardo comes back and is fit to race. So we're probably going to have that Ricciardo and Lawson lineup sooner than you might think. And I really feel bad for Yuki because his future has pretty much been sealed by the guy who came in to sub for Daniel. And uh, I actually didn't see this coming. I thought Yuki was a shoe in for at least the rest of this year probably even next year. Liam Lawson has rocked the F1 world almost as much as Oscar Piastri did, and they're from the same region. Australasia is really changing the entire concept of Formula One right now. One of the other big winners of this entire Grand Prix was the new layout. Getting rid of those four corners and going underneath the grandstand, that was brilliant. That little access road, creating that back straight, that third straight, was fantastic. The only thing that I think could be done to improve it for next year is to make that the DRS. Move that third DRS area from that little section beforehand. So having that on the actual back straight, because it's really effective on that first one, that first straight, we saw a lot of overtakes there. I think we could see even more overtakes there at the actual back straight before going into the last bit before the finish line. That would really spice things up even more. I really want this to stay, and I hope there's been enough positive feedback to make it so. So that means we don't actually have that Marina Bay grandstand thing again. Yes, of course, I know it does reduce ticket sales, but it makes the race all the more interesting and less likely to actually go over the two hour time limit. So I'm actually really approving of this. Let me know in the comments what you thought of the layout. But yes, Carlos Sainz, look at him. Look at him. He's the team leader now. Carlos Sainz is the driver that Ferrari really should actually be backing. That entire race was a masterclass. And also, with this little thing with Lando Norris, it showed that the power of friendship just conquered everyone else. Even the charging Mercedes with that actually really good strategy. I'm really happy to see that. It was really wholesome. And Carlos is just showing that he's really, really intelligent here. He's very smooth. He didn't panic. He knew what he was doing and it worked. It's actually showing that Ferrari are now starting to actually put faith in their drivers that things will work out. And what it's actually shown is that Charles Leclerc might not be the leader that Ferrari were looking for. And Carlos is very much pegged to be going to the Audi project to lead that. So I think Ferrari had better try and keep him. Ferrari, once again, they're actually really showing that they have improved. The Fred Vasseur effect is getting stronger and stronger. And for those of you in my predictions video thinking that I was ridiculous rating Ferrari that highly, told ya. They always do well here, despite their 2023 weaknesses with tire wear and stuff. But actually worked out, so I'm really, really smug. In fact, I actually underestimated them. You know what was really good? McLaren. Oh yeah, I don't need the bubble hat to tell you that this was a very good race, especially after qualifying when we saw Piastri in the 17th after Lance Stroll decided to meet the barrier at the last corner. And Piastri coming up from 17th to 7th. That was really good. And that was in the somewhat upgraded car. It didn't have all the upgrades, Oscar's car. And even then, that McLaren got up to P7. Oscar doing that, especially after the first couple of days when it looked like he was really, really struggling, that this track was really not one of Oscar's you know, good ones. It turned out that's not bad at all, Oscar. Very, very good. So I'm really happy about that. And I will give credit where credit is due here for Lando Norris. That was excellent. And I'm really happy that he and Carlos, even though they're no longer teammates, were able to work together. It just shows that no matter what team they're in, they are friends for life. And they are actually quite happy to try and deny Mercedes a one-two, perhaps, that they work together using DRS really cleverly. And Lando was happy to go along with that. In fact, do you remember actually on the cooldown lap that Lando said he hit the wall? He actually grazed the wall right before George Russell hit it even harder. So maybe George's eyes just followed where Lando was going, but a little bit too far. But yes, I do definitely have to talk about Mercedes because that 
That, that, that pit maneuver was brilliant. That was so good. It was genius. Double stacking them, putting it onto the medium tires. They cut through everyone like butter. That was so good. I have to give them the winner's position just for that. And it looked like it was going to work. Had the power of friendship not been around that day, Russell and Hamilton might have had a 1-2, but then they had to fight each other. Lewis was really challenging George too hard. That they really couldn't figure out a way to try and swap things around, try and make it work, so that means they can both cut through and get a double podium. They were just fighting amongst themselves, and George couldn't handle it, and then hit the wall. And as a result, one of the cars didn't finish the race, so... Uh, I think that's a big problem there. Apparently, there was no one there at the podium celebrations to actually celebrate with Hamilton. I don't know the reason why, I'm not going to put any conspiracy theories about that, but I just thought it was weird, just very surreal. But regardless, Mercedes, they did a really good job here. It just goes to show that having the most equal driver lineup where on the qualifying battles it's actually even Stevens right now, that's not great in a situation where you're vying for the win. Now, okay, Kevin Magnussen, he got a single point. But quite frankly, I have been dunking on Haas far too much this season that a point is practically a victory for them. Yes, I know they're going to be having a brand new B-spec car for Austin, which is practically the RB19 in all but name. But quite frankly, Kevin Magnussen really needs this right now. He has had a very anonymous season and Nico Hülkenberg has been running rings around him. And especially after that year where K-Mag got a pole, he was running rings around Mick Schumacher. And now the same thing's happening to him with Nico Hülkenberg, actually. Nico was about to be pinched by Alfa Romeo to join the Sauber and Audi project, but Gunther Steiner blocked it furiously. And this was all the confusion as to why the Haas contracts hadn't been established and why Zhou Guan Yu's future hadn't been around. So Zhou Guan Yu was not the first choice. And in fact, what does that say about Theo Pocher? He was not the first choice either. Oof. But hey, Kevin Magnussen, he got a point. Job done, credit where credit's due here. Now to the drivers who are a little bit meh, which is good, but not great. And I will say Max Verstappen, even though it was quite clear that this car was not going to be running well here. And no one really knows why the RB19 was really down on pace. Was it to do with a technical directive? Apparently not. Was it down to just the car not liking this track and the surface? I don't really know. Could it be down to the ride height, perhaps, that they've had to raise the ride height of the RB19 and that is its Achilles heel. Bumpy tracks the RB19 doesn't like. But the fact is, is that Max Verstappen, despite all that, still got fifth. He still got fifth place in a car that was severely compromised. That was good damage limitation. Max Verstappen still came away from that race with double figure points. Not bad. That is the sign of a good champion right there. It nearly was fourth. Charles Leclerc was very lucky to keep that position. And if you think about it further, Max Verstappen still did better than he did last year. He finished two places higher than he did in 2022. So, uh, progress? Like I said with Magnussen, Haas, they were actually really good in Q3. They were really quick. They had their best qualifying position at Singapore ever. And yes, of course, it did fade away over the course of the race. They were very, very cheeky with some of their strategies, which sort of worked for K-Mag, but okay, they came away with a point. And that is very crucial if they wanted to try and keep eighth in the constructors or even try and best Williams for seventh in the constructors. So, you know, valuable points. Albon, okay, now, I wasn't too sure what Williams were going to do here. They seemed kind of optimistic after what happened at Zandvoort, and they were actually on for a singular point, which honestly, at Singapore, would have been really, really nice for them to have. But ultimately, that didn't happen. That was down to Checo playing ping pong with the cars, like he had done with Yuki Tsunoda at the start of the race. So Alex Albon was another victim. He then had to take evasive action. That caused him to lose positions, and he ended up 14th. So that wasn't down to the Williams being bad. It was just really, really bad luck and Checo being really scruffy. I'll talk about him later. And okay, Gasly, not bad, not bad. Competent drive, he scored some points. He wasn't really in line for actually anything higher. He actually kept it out of the barriers and Alpine, they came away with something because Ocon's race was not good at all. And then, yeah. Okay, now we're onto the losers here. Lance Stroll, he literally lost it. I'm not gonna dunk on him anymore. That, that's it, I just wanted to say he literally lost the car going into the last corner. There you go. 1.2 million dollars of damage that was. So in terms of that Destructors Championship video I was talking about, he's now actually the second most expensive driver. Oh dear. There are quite big losers here, and one of them is Charles Leclerc. This, to me, 
was the day that Ferrari no longer viewed him as the team leader. He was the sacrificial banana here for the sake of Carlos Sainz. And even though that Charles Leclerc was trying to rail against it, not get to the Delta target that Ferrari wanted, he looked desperate. He was nowhere near any of them. And Ferrari were quite happy to use him as a pawn to ensure that Carlos Sainz maintained the win because Carlos was the stronger driver this weekend. In fact, Carlos was the stronger driver in Monza and Leclerc just looked really desperate, trying to prove something, clinging on to that identity of being the future of Ferrari. But I think the future of Ferrari, it's not him. Or maybe it's the pair of them together. This is the most stable lineup that they've had in years. And if they can keep it, they could be on for second place in the constructors. But the point is though, is that Charles needs to accept that he is not the actual figure of Ferrari that they should be backing entirely. They should be looking at them both. But either way, this was probably not a very good day for him. And he was very lucky to keep four. Then of course, Yuki Tsunoda. This was the weekend I think that his future was sealed and it wasn't even his fault. He didn't retire through his own mistake. He didn't retire because of mechanical failure. He retired because Checo hit him and ultimately that meant he couldn't continue the race and that was it. He couldn't actually try and go after Lawson and try and compete with him in the upgraded AlphaTauri. There were a load of upgrades on that car and Liam Lawson showed that it could score points and it was the best result they had the entire year but Yuki wasn't the one to do it. Even though they are getting closer and closer to not being the worst team on the grid, this was not a good look for Yuki, who has actually been trying to give them some hope this year. I think he's run out of hope himself. He knows that his days are numbered. I really hope he has an exit plan because he looked devastated. And it wasn't even his fault because Sergio Perez, the other loser, was really, really scruffy really really sloppy he caused two drivers to either retire or lose many positions he had a five second penalty he still came away with p8 i know he scored points a double points finish for red bull at a point where they didn't even make q3 is something to actually note but red bull were just nowhere near being anything like they have been for the rest of the season so they therefore are big losers here just for the sheer contrast of performance that we have come to expect for them for the longest time it's been safe to assume that oh max verstappen's gonna win checo is probably gonna be somewhere in the top five but now it's not so sure will things change in suzuka i don't really know it's thrown everything up in the air but checo this was not a good race for him and i really feel sorry for albon and Sonoda because of him. But I don't feel so sorry for Aston Martin because at the moment they really don't seem to be anywhere. Even though they had loads and loads of upgrades and loads of people were actually praising them and thinking that they would do well here. Well, look at this. They really didn't show up at all. In fact, Lance Stroll totaled the car, costing over a million dollars to fix, and Alonso was 15th. But that was not entirely his fault. He did have suspension damage from around about lap two onwards, and he was in the points for quite a while. So it does show that Fernando Alonso does have the skill to try and keep it up there and salvage something. But ultimately, the safety cars, then he had this five second penalty, then the pit stop, which scuppered any chance of trying to get some points here. And that was down to the team. So this was really a weekend to forget. I would actually say it's the worst Aston Martin weekend this season because, you know, they were the last to finish and one of the cards didn't even start. Then, of course, Logan Sargent. This was another race to forget. He got wing damage, he caused a safety car, and he was nowhere. And this is just not good news for one of the last F1 seats available for 2024. I know that Williams want to give him all the time he needs to actually try and progress. He is a Williams Academy driver, but Williams aren't a backmarker team anymore. They do need a driver who is a higher caliber than Logan to partner up with Alex Albon, to try and sustain P7 and maybe try and catch Alpine at the moment. But I just feel that Logan's struggling. And especially when Liam Lawson came in, and that just makes it even worse when Liam Lawson has come in in his third race for an arguably worst car gets P9. He pushed Max Verstappen out of Q3. Nobody does that. And it was Liam Lawson. And by the way, Max Verstappen wasn't angry. He did congratulate Liam. In fact, Max was really kind to everybody this weekend. Actually not wanting to try and defend against Lando, helping out a mate. That was really good. I do want people to see that Max Verstappen isn't a cold, malicious brute. 
all the time. He does have a soft side. He does want the best for some of his friends and drivers. But I think the best time for Logan to try and prove himself is kind of over. If he can't score points at Las Vegas, Williams' last hope for points, then I think this might be it for him. Who's going to replace him? I don't know. That thought at the moment is just pure conjecture. Just a nice little thought experiment. Just like this video here about what might have happened had Lewis Hamilton not joined Mercedes in 2013. Could Michael Schumacher have been an eight-time world champion?